Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Garrett Harding and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to work with holograms, create them inside of DaVinci Resolve. We're going to be working with 2D and 3D for this one. So make sure you've hit that sub button, make sure you've hit that bell, because today it's about to get interesting. Without any further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, so here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. And like I said last week, we're gonna be building off of the corner pinning technique that was taught in the last video. In order to do that, we're gonna to need to grab something with the screen. So I'm gonna import some footage of my phone with the tracking background on it right now. Here's the footage that we're gonna be using. We're just gonna do this on a flat screen. It will track to a moving screen as you saw in the example video. But for this, for the sake of speed in this tutorial, we're just going to use a flat screen. And now we're going to go ahead and hop into Fusion because that is where everything for today's video is going to be happening. So here we have our media in and our media out. First thing we're going to do, drag this over, give ourselves some more room to work. Then we're going to hit shift space and we're going to type in planar tracker. And once you've added a planar tracker into this path, we're going to go ahead and track this phone screen. When you do this, when you're tracking a phone screen, especially if you're going to be moving it around in relation to the camera, make sure when you do this track, your motion type is perspective, otherwise it won't work. So we'll change this to hybrid point area, perspective is good, background is good, luma is good. So we will go ahead and track our phone screen, making sure we get all of those tracking points in there. And then we will set our beginning and we'll track this forward. And there's no movement, so this track should be perfect. Looks like it is. So it's all just gonna be right there. And now comes the fun part. In Fusion, you can actually use 3D objects and you can move around in a 3D workspace. We've touched on this in a couple of past videos, but in this one, it's going to be very important. So what we're going to do is add in a cube. You can use any FBX or OBJ file or I think ABC files as well. But generally my favorite file type to use in Fusion is OBJ. That's what you saw in the example video of that mountain lion skeleton from the Museum of Natural Something in Idaho. So we are going to go ahead and shift space again and we're going to type in cube. And then we're going to add in a cube. Now we have a cube. Look at that. It's got colors on it, looking good. So we're just going to be using this. But like I said, you can use almost any 3D model in here that you want to use for this. So if you wanted to make a little person, you just need a 3D model of that person. If you wanted them to say, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. All you'd have to do is put that audio in while you're showing that little person and you've made Star Wars. Good job. We're gonna go ahead and take this cube, we're gonna render it with a renderer 3D, otherwise we won't be able to work with it at all. And then we're gonna drag this onto our planar tracker. It'll get the green line, that's exactly what you want. And once you've done that, go back into your planar tracker and change operation mode from track to corner pin. Because now, we will get to see our cube in a whole new light. Looks like a square. To fix this very 2D looking shape right here, what we're going to do is after our cube 3D, we're going to add in a merge 3D with this little down enter type arrow with the ball. Click on that or shift space merge 3D, you know, you know the drill. And then on this merge, we're gonna add in a camera with this camera button. With our merge 3D in viewer number one, we're gonna click on our camera so that it's selected, but don't put this in the viewer. You'll see the outline of it because it's selected, but if you put it in the viewer, that's the only thing you'll see. So put the merge in there, click on the camera, and then move the camera. And now, as this thing pulls away, we can get some of that depth going on our cube. So we're gonna move this up a little bit higher even, and then angle it down a little bit more so we get more of that cube type feeling. 
And since we have our camera controls open here on the right in our inspector, we're going to click on the transform button up here, and then we're going to click on use target. And we're going to set that target to be the middle of this cube. And it looks like it's close enough for what we're doing here. So we are going to go ahead and turn this up again so that it's aiming at the cube. And then if we move this to the right or left or up or down or wherever at this point, it's always gonna to try to point at this target in the center of the cube. That's gonna be essential for when we want to start to rotate this cube and have it look like a hologram. And in order to be able to change the color to make it like blue and then give it a little bit of that crackliness, we're gonna to need to click on our cube 3D, hit shift space again and type in fast noise. And then we're going to get a fast noise texture, which we're going to add to our cube. So we go ahead and drag that on. And then it looks a whole different way. But after this renderer 3D, we're going to add in a coloring node. And we're going to turn that thing blue. So everything that shows up here is going to be bluish. And now comes the extra special part where we add in some film grain. If I could type today film grain right there boom and we're gonna make it pretty intense so our size is going up our strength is going up and our roughness is going up if we drag this over a little bit you'll watch it follows that cube you can see how cube like it is you can see all that 3d stuff going on and it's pretty hologrammy but what's one thing that holograms have that this cube doesn't that's right, transparency. What we're gonna do to get that transparency is come on over back to our fast noise texture and we're gonna right click and drag on its output and then let it go on top of our cube. Then we're going to do this for every face of this cube. So we're just gonna texture the whole thing. And then once the whole thing is textured, we're going to change our fast noise texture a little bit in the inspector. So we're going to come over to brightness and we're going to turn that down a touch. And we're going to turn contrast down a touch as well so that we can really start to see through that cube. And now that our cube is a little bit see through, what we're going to do is put our merge 3D back into viewer number one and click on our camera again. You'll see that we have a very different looking cube in here that's because we haven't color corrected it yet and it doesn't have that film grain applied that it has out here what we're gonna do now that we're in here is make sure that we still have that target in the middle and then if we move our camera down we will get a different angle on this cube and then we're gonna set a keyframe right now so we're gonna click on our camera go over to its transform and then we're going to keyframe all of these this one you don't need to keyframe because it just tells you the order that these show up in. And then our target is not going to move so we don't need to change anything with that. What we're going to do to make this thing spin is go ahead and go about a quarter of the way through and then bring our camera around just like that. And we're going to zoom out a bit, zoom out a little more and then angle down. And what I'm going to try to do here is kind of get almost a circle going around it as we move forward. So we're going to give that a little bit more motion. Go forward. A little more motion. Go forward some. A little more motion. And you can see we're getting too far away, so I'm going to bring that in. And then we'll go forward a little bit more. And we'll add in some more motion. Get a little closer. The more time you take with this, the smoother your circle can be. But we're just going to go halfway around this thing. And then if we open up our spline editor, we're able to do something really cool. So with all of these checked, we're going to click on one of them, just one of them. And then we're going to go ahead and hit control A on the keyboard to select all of our keyframes in there. And then watch what happens to these lines when we press S. Round beautiful round keyframe lines so if we watch this back our cube is going to give the appearance of spinning because we're moving the camera around it 
Now we can bump a few of these points in if we need to, or a few of them out to make the cube change size a little bit less, but overall, I would say that this looks pretty good right now. Our next step is to make it look like this is attached to the phone. Because all of this right here that we just did, we could do just standing alone by itself. So we're gonna grab our corner pinner here, and we are going to make an imaginary screen, which kind of can trip you up a little bit. But if you just imagine that each of these four corners is the corner of a screen, we'll say that this phone is standing straight up and down on top of this phone, right? You can make it go like this, and then it's like you're tipping it toward yourself with the left corner closer. It's kind of weird, but this is how, this is what you do. So now that it looks like it's standing up, coming out of the phone, what we're gonna do is go ahead and hit play and watch what happens. It's real skippy because this is relatively hard for the computer to run, but we have a spinning cube right there, very, very visible. We can see it shrinks a little bit there, but all you have to do to fix that is move that camera in when it gets to that keyframe, keep it a little bit closer, and you're good to go. But right there, you have a hologram, and it's 3D. You can use any 3D model, and it's just that easy to pop a hologram into your sci-fi film, into your videos, whatever you're making, 3D holograms. Pretty cool. Now, for 2D holograms, the process is a little bit more simple, but the effect is just as cool. So, we are going to go ahead and delete all of this work that we just did. Boom. And the planar tracker is not necessarily a need at this point, but it is very nice to still use. So what we're going to do is come in with, say, like a screen capture from your phone or really any sort of video that you want to have popping up as your hologram. So what we're going to do for this is drag our corner pins so that they match the corners on our phone. And then we're going to get that screen capture footage, but we're going to use a picture just because that's what I have on hand. We grabbed our screenshot here we're going to drag it onto our planar tracker and it's going to replace our screen just like we learned last week but to turn this into a hologram what we're going to do is take our planar tracker which is our corner pin we're going to drag our top two corners off the screen and as you can see it kind of makes it look like it's standing up toward us but we want it to kind of still be attached to the top of the phone so we're going to take this bottom corner move it to the top and then we are going to move the top ones kind of back a little bit. So that it looks like we have a phone screen popping up off of our phone screen. And then again, we're going to need to introduce some hologrammy type things to this. Is add in that film grain again. Boom, just like that. We're going to make that a little bit more intense, just like we did before. And then we are going to give this a little bit of color. Just like we did before, again, color corrector, go ahead and add that. We're gonna move it to blue. As Star Wars taught us, holograms are blue. And since that corner pin still has the tracking data from our screen, even if we move our screen, that's gonna stay stuck to the top just like that, and it's gonna move right with your phone, which is pretty sweet, but we still need transparency. So we're going to click on our planar tracker. We're gonna come up to our settings tab, and we're going to turn that blend down until it's as transparent as we want it to be. You've got your 2D hologram. If you come around this to the side, it's still going to be two-dimensional. You can turn it, you can do whatever you need to do, but it should do all that stuff automatically because it's tracked. And then if you need to put something on your screen at this point, all you're going to do is create a new planar tracker. You're going to track it and you're going to corner pin it. And then you're going to run what you need on your screen into that planar tracker. And it's literally that easy to make 2D holograms in DaVinci Resolve. 3D takes a little bit more time and effort, but you do get a really cool effect. These 2D ones, same deal, very cool effect, very easy to do. So I hope you learned what you were looking to learn from this video. 
Uh, if you did, please let me know in the comments down below. If there's stuff that you still need help with, please, please ask because I would love to help you get through it and help you advance in this program. That does it for today's video. I will see you next Thursday and thank you for watching.